Welcome everyone to Prodocon's uh, technical web series. Today we are going to be showcasing what we call Product Insight or some people know it as Digital Twin. So in CREO 4 M20, you now have the capabilities of linking what we call your physical prototype with your digital prototype. So that is actually possible by this year. So that particular field enables you to put a series of sensors in your design and then that uh, documentation of sensors communicate with the sensors that are on the real life product. You'll see that in a second. So how it starts is, I'm gonna take one of the components, I'm gonna assign it as a sensor. And how I go about that is, I'm gonna say this part here, it's not just a, a part, but I want to assign that as an angular sensor. In my device, uh, I've got a sensor that will give me a value in terms of the angle. Now that I've actually defined this component, I'm going to go into my top level assembly and insert a sensor in there. So what I will do is I'm going to take this sensor, I'm going to install it in the appropriate position, let's say here. But now in the context of an assembly, I need to define what that sensor actually do. And I wanted to measure this value here, which is actually the angle. If you can look there, it's already defined. So that will mean that I will get uh, sensor readings for the angle. You will see that in a second as well. So we'll finish off this by putting what we call a temperature sensor. As you can see, it's also not defined, so we can define that we're going to assign temp load as our temperature sensor value, and that's basically what we have. We'll just place it in position, let's just say that. So if you look at this now is, I've got values, default values of those two sensors. Now, what we've done using ThingWorks We've created what you call a mashup. This here is the real life readings of my sensor values, and this is the actual temperature of my unit. Let me show you that. So, what we have in here, I'll just position this probably just up to there. So, what I have here is this simple unit. Now, this unit here. Is instrumented with the Raspberry Pi and this Raspberry Pi has an angle sensor and we are also reading a temperature as well so if I were to change this carburetor here it's connected to this if I were to change the angle for an example look at that I'm getting real life readings of, of that okay so for a temperature sensor I can actually put in a hot object in here and then I can see the temperature drop. Okay, so that's basically what we have in terms of our digital twin and of course our physical prototype. So why is this actually significant? It's actually significant for two reasons. In Creo, I can actually say connect to this, to this server. So the server that we talked about those values, I'm going to feed them into my digital prototype. Of course, it will ask you to put in your password. And it's going to produce this. I can even say which results do I actually want. I'm going to say I want results from obviously today, but then I'm going to make this to be around that. Then there's that's fine, that's fine. I can say now send this data into Creo. So what this will do, it will actually send the data, it even shows me if it's, it's actually ready. If I click on this, it shows me that the sensor values are now actually available. So what I can do now is I can load the sensor data and here it is. And all those angles that we were busy generating, if you remember, let's say, Ah, there we go. These are the values. So I can now say what happens if I take those values and put them in here. So 
if I say run, look at that. My digital prototype is behaving exactly like my physical prototype. And you'll be aware that even the temperature itself, it actually changed. It's reflecting that temperature. Okay. So now the beauty of this is now I can go into my Clio and say, now I need to do something with those results. Maybe I'm too concerned about the temperature. For this particular scenario, the Raspberry Pi is inside the enclosure, so that will make makes it look like uh, it's uh, 40 degrees. Okay, so I can take this into my thermal analysis because I want to actually run a thermal analysis for this type of condition. So I'm now in thermal mode. Again, I am going to be covering Creo Simulate. So what you see here is uh, Creo Simulate. I'm now in thermal mode. Instead of me putting a random value for my temperature, I am going to assign temp load, which is exactly the same parameter that we had on our values. And if you can look at this here, it even shows the current temperature, the same temperature as that particular unit. Now that I've actually got that, I can now run my basic uh, thermal analysis. So while this is actually running, let's consider what we've just done. So that means that you can instrument your design with sensors and you can get the relevant information of your physical prototype and see how it's actually being used or how it behaves in the real world. And that insight can guide you into improving your designs uh, and making them better, for an example. So you can cater for certain uh, scenarios where there was no uh, design requirement, for an example. Now that maybe this uh, unit is operating in certain conditions, now we're trying to look at what would be the temperature impact as far as that is concerned. So now that the analysis is actually complete, I can say, show me the values of my thermal analysis and I can even choose the display options that I actually require. And that's basically it. So I always like to just modify the legend in terms of uh, how it looks. I'm going to just leave it like that. So as you can see, I'm having my thermal an uh, analysis results and the values, the inputs are all coming from the physical prototype. And that's basically all for this week. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and comment. Uh, see you next time. Thank you very much.